My name's Malcolm Watson, and I play the violin, and this is my friend. Hello, I'm Colin McAllister. I play the guitar. Malcolm and Colin play music together. Hey, this is a pretty cool wow. place, isn't it, Colin? Wow, this is excellent. And sometimes they like to play music outside. When musicians play together, they must know how long each note should be played. And to do this, they count to themselves, or out loud. One, two, three, four. Music and math are closely related, and Malcolm and Colin are going to show us how. Well, you know, there's something really amazing about music, because it breaks down into sections. You know, when we listen to a piece, we think of it as a whole, complete thing. But it's actually made up of lots and lots of little, little sections. A measure is a division in music into time, and a measure could last any number of counts. Normally, or most commonly, four counts. So one measure would be one, two, three, four. In a measure of four, four counts adds up to one whole measure. All of this stuff breaks down and it's very exact. In fact, have you seen we've got a real close connection here between music and mathematics. If I have a single strum of the guitar that lasts for four counts, I could count and play like this. One, two, three, four. Now, if I want to further divide this down, I could play each strum lasting two counts instead of four counts, and that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. But in music, we call that a half note. So a whole note, which I played before, lasts for four counts. One, two, three, four, and a half note lasts for two counts. One, two, three, four. We can further divide that down into what we call quarter notes in music, which are in fractions could be represented as one quarter. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But do you notice they take the same amount of the time as that original whole note? One, two, so four quarter notes make up one whole note, two half notes make up one whole note, and that's the be beginnings of how we start to talk about how time and math figures into music. In mathematical form, whole notes are four-fourths, or one whole. Half notes are two-fourths, or one half. Quarter notes are one-fourth. So now is what we're going to do is we're going to mix up all those different notes that we've been talking about. Whole notes, half notes, quarter notes. And we're actually going to play you a bit of the blues. Over to you, Colin. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Listen and observe as Colin plays the guitar. What kind of notes is he playing? Colin plays four notes for every one whole note that Malcolm plays on the violin. So Colin is playing quarter notes. Understanding the notes that make up a song helps us to appreciate music and the musicians who play those notes for us. Problems to come and be mathematical and join the number crew. Join Fizz and Flo and Bradley and Ted and Mirabelle And there's Baby Bunting who likes to help as well So come and be mathematical and join the number crew All aboard when you hear us call the number crew needs you Lots to be done before then, though. Those mince pies look good, Dad. All the more worth waiting for, then. Couldn't we just try one? Between us? Oh, all right. 
There you go. Yes. Um, oh, after you. No, after you. Oh, what's the problem now? Well, what is the problem now? If you had first pick of this mince pie, which piece would you choose? Well, yeah, the smaller bit, obviously, because you're polite like that, aren't you? Anyway, it would make it a lot easier if the two pieces were the same size. Ted meant to cut it in half, but did he? No, he didn't. If you cut something in half, you should end up with two equal pieces, exactly the same size, like this. There you go. Cut exactly in half. Thanks, Dad. What about them, Dad? Mm. Well, you didn't want them, did you? Mm. Mm. Want what? We're trying Dad's mince pies. Can I have one? Not a whole one. Well, I haven't got anyone to share it with, have I? <laughs> Me. Me! Right. One pie. Slice it. Share it between two. As ever, I think Ted knows what he's up to. And if you've ever wondered why a half is written like it is, well, it's one thing. Slice it and share it between two. There you go. That's a half, which is a one, a slice and a two. And as you might already know, something written like this with one number on top of another is called a fraction. Get your teeth into fractions, get a bit of the action, try a slice of something nice and eat a fraction. A half is something sliced in two, that's half for me and half for you. And when you cut a thing in half, you end up with two equal parts. To write a half, here's what you do. It's a one and a slice, all over two. Now, here's something else you might like to try. Can we have half each? But there's four of you. I don't think we're talking about halves now. Right again, Ted. If you're going to cut something up into four equal pieces, you don't end up with halves. Oh, no. You end up with a different fraction. You end up with quarters. And how do you write a quarter? Well, it's a bit like the one we've just done. Ted had one cake, which he sliced into how many pieces? Four of them. There you go. That's a quarter, which is one thing, a slice, and a four. Tasty things, these fractions. Get your teeth into fractions. Get a bit of the action. Try a slice of something nice. And eat a fraction. A quarter's something sliced in four. No one gets less and no one gets more. Yes, when four people have to share, they get the same. It's only fair. To write a quarter's not a chore. It's a one and a slice. All over four. Who wants to help me put these on the Christmas tree? Oh, they're lovely. Take half each. Oh, we can't do that. Why not? If we cut them in half, well, they'll break. Dear, I think Bradley's taking it a bit too seriously. You don't have to slice each decoration in half. You sort of slice the whole group in half. Divide the group in two. There you go. A different sort of fraction there. A group of six decorations divided in half. Half each for Bradley and Flo. See, Bradley? Nothing's broken. And we've got half each. Any more decorations, Mum? Oh, yes. These are chocolates to hang on the tree. I'll help. Me too. Can I? Me! Me! How are we going to divide these chocolates equally between you four? Oh, easy stuff. There's eight chocolate decorations, and we're going to divide them between four people. So, let's do our slicing to find out what a quarter of eight is. All right, I have to do a bit more slicing this time. So, there you go. Eight chocolates divided into quarters. It's two each. Get 
Stretch your teeth into fractions Get a bit of the action Try a slice of something nice And eat a fraction If you're sharing things in two That's half for me and half for you And when four people have to share They get the same, it's only fair the parts must be of equal size Cos fractions always equalise Roll up! Roll up! Roll up! OK, you getting a grip on fractions now? Well, have a look at these fractions. Do you know if they are halves or quarters? Is the red bit a half or a quarter? It's a half! Is the red bit a half or a quarter? It's half again! How about this red fraction? Half or quarter? Half again! What about this? A quarter! And this one? A quarter. And what fraction is this? It's a quarter again! What's this fraction? A half. And one last fraction. A half again! OK, so, you getting these fractions sorted now? Well, you could try and find some other fractions for yourself. For instance, could you draw a line that divides your table in half? Is there more than one way you could draw the line? Or oh, how about the number group? How many is half of the number group? And if the number crew are in the galley making the food, then who's steering the ship? Ah!